Welcome to this first quick start video for V-Ray for Modo. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take an existing Modo scene and convert that for use in V-Ray. Now the good news is this is extremely easy to do. As you can see, I've got a scene here that's already got all the lighting and shading done in Modo. And I've got a preview render here and I've also done an F9 bucket render of it. So at this stage, all I need to do to convert this scene for use with V-Ray for Modo is to select the render item in the shader tree and then go to the V-Ray menu and then go to add package, add V-Ray render settings to selected render item, which I'll do now. You can see as soon as I do that, I get some additional tabs here in my render item properties. Now you can get the V-Ray plugin to automatically add packages to your scenes. And in fact, this is what it does by default when you first install it. However, this does have some potential drawbacks, which I'll explain in a minute. So I'm going to go to my system preferences, go to the V-Ray preferences, and there's a V-Ray packages section here. And when you first install the plugin, by default, these packages are automatically added to any new scenes that you create in Modo once the plugin's installed. However, the problem with this is that if you happen to work in a collaborative environment with people who might not have the V-Ray plugin installed, whenever they open one of your scenes, they're going to be confronted with a series of error messages warning about the missing plugin. So for this reason, I personally prefer to set my preferences so that the packages are not automatically added to my scenes. And that means I have control over which scenes the V-Ray packages are added to, and I simply add them manually when I need to. So having added the V-Ray package to my render item, I'm simply going to switch to the V-Ray tab in my layouts. And in order to see how the scene reacts, I just need to do one very small change, which is to go to the V-Ray GI settings. And I'm just going to turn global illumination on. And having done that, I'm just going to click this little button in my toolbar to launch the V-Ray RT real-time renderer. So I let V-Ray RT run for about a minute and a half, and you can see that my scene looks more or less identical to the way it did when it was rendered using Modo's native renderer. So what the V-Ray plugin has done is basically taken all my shading and lighting settings and converted them for use with V-Ray's renderer behind the scenes. And this very tight integration between the V-Ray plugin and Modo makes it very convenient to convert existing scenes for use with V-Ray or to build up new scenes while still using Modo's native lighting and shading and working with Modo's preview. So now that I can see that the scene renders successfully with V-Ray RT, I am now going to use the standard V-Ray renderer to do a test render. So I'm just going to click this little button here on the toolbar, which is to render with V-Ray's renderer. And I'll pause the video while the render is taking place. So here is my resulting render done at default settings and you can see it's a little bit noisy. That's not entirely surprising since just like Modo, V-Ray's default settings are optimized for speed over quality. So I'm going to open my frame buffer history by clicking on this little H icon here. And we can see my last two renders, the first one being the RT render and the next one being the render I've just done with the bucket render and we can see this render took 1 minute and 44 seconds. Now before I move on I just want to very quickly show you an important setting here in the frame buffer history. So if you go to history settings you just want to make sure that autosave is ticked because otherwise uh, V-Ray isn't going to automatically save all your renders and if you want to compare renders and render times it's important to have these saved. So the next step is to get rid of the noise in the image. I'm going to switch to the V-Ray main tab and you can see we have some sampling settings here at the top. Now one of V-Ray's great strengths is the adaptive sampling which allows you to get rid of noise with the minimum of work. 
So the way the adaptive sampling works is to intelligently sample your scene by comparing the contrast between neighboring pixels. If the contrast is low, it will use a low number of samples, and if the contrast is high, it will use a higher number of samples. The terminology in V-Ray is a little different to Modo. In V-Ray, samples are sometimes called subdivs, and what a subdiv is, is essentially the square root of the total number of samples. So for example, here, if I have max subdiv set to four, that means that the maximum number of samples is four multiplied by four, in this case, 16. So if I want to increase this to a maximum of 256 samples, what I have to do is work out what the square root of 256 is. In this case, it's 16. So I'm gonna set my max subdivs to 16. Now, something I'd like to point out is that the V-Ray for Modo developers have done a great job of implementing some very helpful and detailed tooltips. You can see that as I hover over all these settings, there is a very specific and useful tooltip displayed. So if I go over the uh, min shading rate, you'll see there's quite a long tooltip displayed here. It tells me that the min shading rate setting is going to control the number of rays shot for anti-aliasing versus rays shot for other sampling effects such as reflections and GI. So the higher values mean that the render engine is going to be biased towards reflection and GI type sampling and lower values in this setting means that the render engine is going to be biased towards pure anti-aliasing. That means uh, anti-aliasing, geometric effects, and depth of field, and so on. Now, when I analyze my initial render done using the default settings, I can see there is a little bit of noise because of the depth of field, but there would appear to be a lot more noise as a result of uh, a shortage of reflection samples. All these fireflies here and this high contrast area of noise here would suggest to me that we need a lot more reflection samples in the scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my minimum shading rate to 16 to tell the render engine that I wanted to concentrate more on reflection samples as opposed to pure anti-aliasing. So now having changed just these two settings, the max subdivs and the minimum shading rate, I'm going to fire off another test render and see what the results are. And here is the completed render. And you can see that by changing just two settings, I've got a completely clean result. Now, if you're used to working with Modo's bucket renderer, you'll appreciate that this is a much simpler workflow than using Modo's native renderer. Now, if I open my frame buffer history, we can see that this latest render took six minutes and 35 seconds. Now, this is probably not the most optimized render time you could achieve with this scene, but in terms of the simplicity of workflow, it certainly works. Now, of course, in V-Ray, you can also optimize your scene on a per material basis in a similar fashion to the way you would in Modo by going into the shader tree and adjusting the sampling settings for your problem materials. But at times when you're looking for a fast and efficient workflow, using the adaptive sampling can often be a much quicker way of working, even if the resulting render times are slightly slower. So if I open my original Modo render to compare it with the result in V-Ray, you can see there's some small differences in terms of color saturation and intensity, but overall my lighting and shading has been translated very faithfully into V-Ray. And this scene does contain some relatively complex shading. For example, this anisotropic metal has rendered perfectly without me having to go in and manually change any settings. So you can see that the V-Ray for Modo plugin is very well integrated and also extremely easy to use. So with that said, thank you very much for watching this introductory quick start tutorial and I hope to see you next time.